welcome to the third edition of the Power Hour. Uh, this is our monthly session, which we bring professionals the latest ideas from business development, marketing, and social media. Uh, this morning, I'm joined by Melanie Goodman. Good morning, Mel. Hi, David. So today we're going to cover uh, LinkedIn company pages. This is a bit of an extension of the session uh, that we ran uh, in January, which was more of a generic overview uh, of LinkedIn profiles. Um, Growing LinkedIn company pages followings can be hard, can't it, can't it, Manly? I mean, it's, it's, it can be a challenge to build that audience. Um, so today we're just going to we're going to cover some some top tips. You're also going to uh, share your screen um, and we're going to take a Q&A from our audience, which is live on Zoom with us. We've also got another audience on YouTube followed in. So so welcome to you all. But Melanie, first of all, do you want to just give a little introduction to yourself? You've got a prolific sort of social media following that I've been looking for many years, but why, for those who've not come across you before, why don't you explain what you do and the sort of clients you work with? Sure. Okay. So um, my company is Trevor's Ann, as you can see behind me. Um, and we are a um, LinkedIn marketing and training company. Um, we specialize mostly in marketing and training for the financial and legal um, sectors. Um, no paid advertising unless someone really, really wants it. Um, because as we know, uh, LinkedIn advertising is notoriously expensive. Um, and actually, um, through our campaigns, we can get great traction for clients um, without using any paid campaigns. So it's about creating interest, organic growth, you know, built, telling the story, building the followers in yeah. quite niche areas like professional services. It's different to generic marketing, isn't it? That might be more consumer orientated. It, ours is very relationship orientated. So it's all about building relationships, building relationships through messaging, building relationships through content, um, creating strategies um, which aren't spammy. Um, so, and really targeted. So that, that's really the key is always speaking to your ideal audience and um, targeting your strategies. And you can do this on LinkedIn through various means, which I'm gonna talk about and show you, um, but without using um, LinkedIn paid ads, you, don't, you just don't really need them. Brilliant. And we love hearing from our audience uh, on PCD content. So it's great to see, uh, great to see Amy Blackwell uh, with us, as well as uh, Laura Daly from Equium. You joined some of the earlier sessions, Laura, so great to have you with us. Rachel Moynihan from Crestbridge. Put questions in the chat. Um, the structure today is going to be, I'm going to share some share my screen in a second where Manly's going to walk us through a top 10 tips. So you've got some tangible takeaways. Then she's going to share her screen and walk through a little profile, uh, some profile examples and how you how you can build build that up. And then we're going to take some uh, some questions at the end as well. So uh, across the 60 minutes, there'll be stacks of value for you here. So um, I'm just going to prepare my screen to share and then we will uh, get into these uh get into these tips. So, um, Melanie, you've got a little positioning, a positioning stat there. Why don't you uh, just explain? Yeah, that? so LinkedIn pages, um, according to LinkedIn, get um, 30 times more shares if they've been completed. So they've got their logo, they've got their background image, their tagline, etc. Now, I brought this up personally with LinkedIn as to what they meant by more shares. Did they mean that more people share their pages or the content gets shared more? And they, were, they weren't completely you know, clear on it themselves. Um, but they actually they said that basically um, what happens is if you have optimized your company pages, they are more likely to show them to people. In the, in the feed. So, um, so my followers um, and my company page followers are more likely um, to see my company page than if they are following somebody else whose um, company page hasn't been optimized. So mm -hmm. the key to always to personal profiles and to company pages on LinkedIn is to make sure that they're search engine optimized. Um, mm -hmm. And also because they rank in um, like by Google and Yahoo, et cetera, um, that you, what you want to come up higher in, um, in searches and to do this, um, and you want to be shown to the right people. And to do this, you need to, as we'll, we'll talk about adding the right keywords, et cetera, but, but you need to complete all the parts of the profile. So 
um, that include your location, include the contact information, um, and the, the what you actually do, obviously the name of the company, um, and I'll, I'll show you when we create a page how to how to do that. Brilliant. So uh, just coming here to um, to tip one um, on page, page optimization. Yeah, so this just sort of follows on from, so what I was saying is it's all about optimizing your page um, to be found. Um, so you want to really use keywords that people are going to be searching for. So even if you um, specialize in, say, in something very, very niche, um, I obviously you include it in your page description, but in your tagline and, um, you, um, and your heading, you really want to make sure that you've got the words that people will actually search for. So for me, like the most important words are LinkedIn marketing, LinkedIn training. Um, and so you really need to think about, um, yeah, about the things that people are going to search for. And there's tools that you can use, um, keyword tools, um, which you can use, which actually tell you what people search for in relation to your particular topic. If anyone wants to um, drop me a line afterwards, I, I can send you some links. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can go onto Google and it brings up a whole load of questions that people have asked and and you can just see what people are looking for. And if you put that in your page description, you will come up um, before your competitors on searches. So think a bit laterally about what the customer might be searching for. Maybe look at exactly. what, how they're optimizing and incorporate some of that into your own uh... Exactly. So you sort of think about, um, you know, so, uh, you know, I, I would probably think about, say, how does um, a banker who's, who's coming to my page, so hopefully coming to my page um, or looking for somebody with my skills, what would they look for? They'd probably look for um, someone who can make them stand out, someone who can, um, you know, so they're looking for um, a service to um, update or optimize their profile. And basically, I just think of all the phrases that people would look for and make sure that it's in my page so that, um, so that we, we come up first in searches. Okay, great. Tip two. So, so I mean, I know that there's certain groups that I, I noticed that are very well organized in terms of employees when there's when there's a corporate post yeah. widely shared. And, and, that, and that really matters, doesn't it? I mean, Pat, you could explain on the on the employee engagement. Yeah, it does. It's probably the key way um, to get your posts out there is if you have people associated with your page who can share the posts. Um, how they share them is actually key to how far they go. So you want to make sure that they don't press that share button under the post because LinkedIn really doesn't like shares at all. It sees it as sort of duplicate content. And any every, you probably noticed on your personal page, whenever you share a post, it gets really few views. The way around this is to go into the post at the top right hand um, side of the post on the company page, there's three little dots. And if you go to that, you can copy the link to the post. Mm. Then your employees should start a post afresh as themselves and um, paste in the link to the post. LinkedIn mm. then see that as fresh content rather than shared content. And each post will then get far more views than if they just press the share button, never press the share button on LinkedIn. It's like the kiss of death um, to, a, to a post reach. Okay, great. Great little hack there. I mean, something I haven't even thought about. And But yeah. it's people internally looking at, particularly if they're in a marketing team, how, and they've got a lot of front office colleagues, how do they get those colleagues engaged to share that, to share that content? It's a key question, isn't it? And something they can solve uh, amongst themselves. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, no, that's really key. I just wanted to say as well that you should make sure that all your employees um, have associated themselves with your company page because sometimes mm. you, you see that they've just got a little gray squared out um, button on their experience section because if they don't type in the company page exactly as it is on LinkedIn um, on their own personal profile, it it doesn't um, it doesn't sort of uh, auto populate and you get the little gray square instead of a logo so you want to make sure that they're properly associated with your company page so each one should have on their experience section 
they should have uploaded the company page as it is on LinkedIn um, as their current experience and get the little logo as well. Um, that's quite important to make sure that everyone's aligned with the, with the company page. Absolutely. And, and tip three then on uh, generating, having a follow button on your website. Yeah, just so many people, um, they sort of forget the power of actually putting your links to your social media on your contact page on your website. Mm. I mean, you don't have to put it on your contact page, but that's normally the best place to put it. Um, and I mean, I find from my own sort of Google analytics, it's amazing the traffic um, that, that people um, press on the contact us page with the, and go from, the, from there to my LinkedIn. Um, because you know what happens is they, they're on Google and then they they find your they find your site they go to your site and then you want to naturally send them to well assuming that you've got an active page and you're all updated and um, you want to then be able to show off your content so you want to send them to your LinkedIn page as well and then they can see you know your activity on it because it can be a great way to keep in touch with that those people so people might come on your landing page they're not ready to buy right then but it's sort of an invite to say look keep in touch with what we're doing give us a follow you're building your audience and you're having another touch point on you yeah exactly you just want them to press that follow button which is um so that you you stay in their top of their mind every time you post so um it's the same this this tip four is is the same principle mm. is that you want to add the link to your um, emails at the at the bottom. Um, it just makes it really easy for people just to go and check you out if you've sent them an email. Um, and as you said, press the follow button um, on your profile. Um, no, just as a just as a small aside, um, be careful with it. if you're on your LinkedIn profile, um, you have the option to have the connect button or the follow button. And a lot of people change it to the follow button so that um, they get followers a lot quicker than connections. Um, and a lot of people are much more sort of precious about their network and keeping it targeted and very small so that they'd rather have followers. One thing I just want to mention is that um, if you do this, there is a good chance that LinkedIn view you as not no longer actively growing your network it's how they view the follow button because it's mm. passive rather than you having the option to connect on your profile which means just for anybody who has the sales navigator linkedin sales navigator and is interested in their social selling index score which is the score that linkedin give you on a daily basis to rate your activity on linkedin that will fall by about 10 points if you change your button from connect to follow so just as, as an aside if you're bothered about your score on linkedin be careful about changing your button because it, it talk for, i'm talking from experience <laughs> that it goes down to uh, 10 points and getting it back is not easy from linkedin interesting good tip yeah. so um so tip five here yeah, so this is an interesting one. And it's something that I've seen, I'm seeing more and more on people's profiles is that they're adding um, a link to the company page on their personal profile, not as a hyperlink because you can't add a clickable link to like your headline on LinkedIn um, or in your about section, but they'll just add the actual address and they, they'll, you know, they'll, they, they might put a sentence inside their about section that says, you know, go and check out my, uh, you know, our company page and um, and do that that way. So um, it is quite a good way of sort of prompting people. So they're in your, you know, they're looking at your profile and whereas they might've just clicked off it and onto someone else's, um, you know, you've actually sort of saying, well, you know, just have a look at here and we've got something else for you. So it sends, um, it, it's something you might want to consider adding. It's like, in, you know, we're going in all directions. You just want to do it as many different ways as possible, send people there. Because as well, if they follow you, then that's better than generic website traffic. Anonymous, well, it depends on your business, but you know, an anonymous website hit where someone bounces onto your website and bounces away you might lose, you know, whereas actually if you're funneling people towards giving you a follow, it's at least it's some kind of footprint, isn't it? That you can then- Yeah, base. and I mean, with the recent sort of changes in the company page analytics, you can now actually see who your, who your company page followers are, et cetera. So it's, it's useful. And on the content, so the content strategy, um, what should take here? Right, okay, so it's, crucial that you actually post on the page once you've set it up because that's I think I think it might be actually one of the 
biggest sort of um, failures of people is that they set it all off and it's all beautifully set up and then they just they don't really post on it so um obviously there's often if you haven't got a team of people um, and a marketing team which i know it makes it hard for some people um what i would suggest is that you literally take your post that you're going to be posting on LinkedIn as yourself every day for consistency. And you just um, change it slightly so that it makes sense and put it on your company page. Mm. I mean, um, one of the sort of key um, ways to making content creation um, sort of simple and efficient and, um, you know, increasing your productivity is to use a scheduling tool. Mm. Um, but on a daily basis, if you're doing it manually, or even if you're doing it in a scheduling tool, just change, just use the same content, but just change it slightly for your company page. Um, and it is really important that there is a consistent feed of new posts on there. Mm. Um, and they've introduced the, the content suggestions tab, which I can show you, so that they'll actually suggest to you trending articles for your network um that makes it really simple and quick for you to just share an article um i mean I've, i'd always suggest suggest um sharing content that is going to appeal to your ideal clients so mm -hmm. to your audience so sort of maybe think a little out the box not just not just about um what you're doing in your business so not just about a sort of yourself but more mm -hmm. about something that's of value for them what they mm -hmm. would want to know um, because it's because after a while it, it gets a bit dull just looking at people's company pages where they're just photos of people's events and yeah. their awards and but if you actually post resources on your company page that's what I try and do is I try and make it a mix of some promo so maybe 20% pro promo as to you know what mm. we do and you know our courses that we run but then most of it 80% is actually here's an ebook here's a guide here's a tip, here's a video tutorial, and try and do that on a regular basis. So people have a reason to come back to your page because it, you know LinkedIn will only show it, um, show your post to a small amount of um, the followers. And so it's not gonna be every, every follower that's gonna see every post. So you, know, you, you want people to voluntarily come back to your page and think oh you know I wonder you know what they've posted or I wonder if they've done a post on this latest thing that LinkedIn have introduced and so that's um uh, that's uh it's important to post regularly and also um if you've got the LinkedIn mobile app not, don't forget that um company pages you also have the ability to post stories LinkedIn stories mm. um from company pages as well so mm. um that's a new that's a new what, about a year ago, I, with PCB, I, I changed my thinking around posting everything through my own page and having the company page as a kind of reference point into just posting largely through the company page. Um, and what I found was that when I was tagging other professionals, for example, in content we produced, um, when they shared that, it gathered more followers because people saw the company page as part of the sharing process. And I think people are more likely to click follow on a company than connect to me personally if they don't know me. You know, it, it kind of, it, ga it gains some momentum. So I think by making a simple change, as you say, just take what you would have posted, give it a twist, put it through the company feeds, and you might find there's different dynamics um, that come out um, over the longer period. And the yeah. consistency, as you say, of posting um is interesting because basically like if you look down a corporate feed it gives you a summary of what the business is about so as you say think about the proportions of which you want promotion value yeah. and trends and all of that so yeah i mean so definitely so, so that actually leads straight on to my tip number seven which is actually about hashtags because these and i could talk about hashtags for like hours um on linkedin because they're like the probably the latest greatest invention of um, linkedin in like the last sort of year or so uh, well no they've become really relevant let's say in the last year or so they've always been there um and basically linkedin company pages are really the only way on linkedin that you can comment on someone's post as a company because normally, if you ever want to comment on a post, you have to do it as um, as an individual. But, and I'm going to show you this when I share the screen, how you can do that as a company. And that is literally the best way to get people to see and um, see your company and increase your visibility 
is by regularly engaging on people's posts um, using your company page hashtags. Mm. Um, and so that's how you choose the right hashtags for your page is by thinking about where your ideal client is because they're the posts that you're going to want to comment on. So they keep seeing you. And, mm. um, and actually, I, I mean, I've had inbound business that, that way through people seeing my comments, mm. my comments on, um, on posts. So I'm, I'm going to show you that later. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, customer service, brand supporters, you know, um, how, how, do you, how do you build momentum this way? Yeah, so <clears throat> this is often just actually speaking to your connections and your clients and asking them sometimes if they'll share your posts actually say you know look we, we, you know we're doing this um you know would you mind sh sharing it especially if it's mm. somebody you know who's got a big following which is um we talk a bit about influencers um but yeah really just um gaining support of i mean you I have like a regular band of not because I've asked them to but I actually have like a regular band of followers mm. who will share my my posts because if your content is right you know people um people will realize that their networks would also like to see it and people are really surprisingly generous um so you know or there's also a bit of reciprocity you know you can say to people and I've done this before um and I'm not talking about an engagement pod but saying to people someone you know look I've seen you're doing this mm. I'd be really happy to share it with my network which is substantial um you know would you mind sharing about my LinkedIn accelerator training mm. that I'm doing next week mm. and I think you, sometimes you know you just need to sort of actually think like for example you know if you've got a client who is a big household name um you know ask them to to you know share a post or share content and it's amazing people are really generous and it's something that often I think people are a bit nervous to do. It's like, oh, am I like begging? Am I asking? I don't mean to do it every week, but, mm. it, but you know, if you've got something big coming up, ask mm. them to share the post from your company page. You know, mm. it's really, uh, it's a really good way of getting your, your content out. So it can be done just kind of unsaid through reciprocity. Like if you share, if you nicely share someone else's, you'll find it just pops without having said anything. Exactly, you because over time, that. people, th th as I said, once you, you build a following of people who want to follow your page, they voluntarily go to your page. And so I've got often um, people say, say it's a head of business development or a head of marketing mm. who will now just share my post with their team. Mm. Um, you know, or they might, you know, somebody might have a client who they know might be interested in something that I'm doing. So they'll, they'll share it that way. Um, so it's really building up goodwill and you can do mm. this through messaging as well. So it's something, you know, that when, when we're running client campaigns, one of the messages in the sequence of sort of messaging campaigns that we set up is that we will, we will just say in a, in a sort of very conversational message, look, I'm doing a big push of my of my page now it's you know, mm. I know let's say it's like q3 we're doing a big push of our company page can you um you know would you mind giving us a follow um if you like our content mm. and people are normally you know really happy to do that and you're fine if you're doing that and you're asking 20 people a day you'll soon get your company page followers up because it is the, probably the biggest bugbear with linkedin company pages is the lack of real engagement compared with a personal post mm. i mean you see it even on the company pages of like microsoft has got like 13 and a half million followers if you look at a, a recent post you'll find it's got like seven likes on it <laughs> it's like what um but that's just that is that is the framework of LinkedIn company pages. They just don't get the same traction as personal profiles. Mm. Um, but you can do everything, you know, to, to, to get your, your content out there in the best way possible. But it is important for small businesses to have a footprint, isn't it? You know, I, I think, that, like, admittedly, you say, yeah, Microsoft, 13 million followers, not much engagement. But if you've got a company with 50 followers, it does, just doesn't look right, does it? I think, I think you need a critical mass of followers needs that footprint, don't they? regardless of the engagement yeah it's social proof so yeah. people but, it, and it, but in the same way even people say if I'm dealing with an individual coach so say I'm mm. dealing with an executive coach or someone who's just an entrepreneur somebody who's you know an individual self-employed I always say to them set it because they're like do I need a company mm. page you know I've got a website I'm like yes just set up your company page 
and um, it, in, it's social proof that people see you're completely well-rounded. So your business is well-rounded. You know, you've really sort of, you know, you're, you've finished the job, you've setting yourself up properly. And um, then it gives you, you know, if you're posting on your personal, as I said, you're posting on your personal profile, just put the same things on your company page. And then you're building up a credible page for people to go to. Because now, actually, I was reading an article the other day that basically said, like, websites are dead. It was actually mm -hmm. that because people are now, they go to LinkedIn and they can just stay on LinkedIn. So if you've really, um, if you have built your company page properly, there is no reason why it wouldn't have um, not as much information as a website obviously because you can do there's far more functionality with a website um mm -hmm. than there is with company pages at the moment but they're constantly building on them and um let's just say that a website maybe is becoming less prominent if you've got a, a, a well manufactured company page and it's well set up so tip nine here on on analytics so like kind of like absorb what is happening on the post that you're making and and then use yeah. that as a feedback loop yeah, that's really important. It's like, um, well, it's like with your with your personal content as well. Is it's really always really important to look at who is looking at your content, where they're based, and um, and you know what is working and what mm. is not. Um, so, I mean, we know um, there's statistics to say that like when you're posting videos, um, videos that are under a minute long are far more widely viewed than long tutorials. I mean, mm. and, and long videos of like five, six minutes. Um, people have short concentration spans on social media. And unless it's a real, unless it's, I mean, when I do a tutorial, it is, it is usually more than a minute, but I still try and keep them to a reasonable amount of time that people in their day have got to spend on it. It's not a webinar when you're looking at something through your feed, you know, you haven't mm -hmm. sat down for an hour to, to look at it. You generally want to just have some quick takeaways. So, you know, try and make those videos sort of, um, you know, just um, very sort of pointed um, so that people have, you know, they can just take away um, just one or two points and put them into practice or, you know, something of value um, from them. Um, but yeah, but look at basically who is visiting your page, because it might be that if you're finding, um, like I naturally, uh, there's, there's always a lot of people from locations that I don't generally do business with who visit my page because I often will mention things like digital, like the word digital and marketing. And there's people from all over the world who follow those sort of search terms. Um, so that's why it's important to have some more niche hashtags on your page um, so that you get the right audience. Um, so we'll talk about that. Final tip here before we go to share your screen only. Sure. So this is, yeah, this follows on from what we were saying about um, influences and businesses with large followings and people with large followings. So be strategic in your personal profiles and who your employees are following. And um, it's in that way that you can also, you can, um, you can, build build your relationships not I mean they don't always have to be global influences but just in your sector in your, and in your area people that are credible and um, you know that and you know that they've got a large network themselves um, you know comment on their posts engage on their posts and again they're far more likely to share your content so you need to be strategic in who you're personally building your own network with mm. um because you want to um have some gain some sort of uh, good value from from your actual network i mean i i do i mean i often will share even sometimes um you know i've sometimes shared posts by competitors usually if they're not based in the same location as me mm. admittedly um because actually um you know they will sometimes they will then share you know some of your tips with their audience and, you know, often you provide a different service to someone else. So I think think of strategic partnerships is really the way forward. Mm. Um, so when you're building your own network, yeah, think about, think, as you said, laterally um, as to people that would be useful. So, for example, you know, you if you're a financial advisor, 
um, you might want law firms or accountants to share your posts. Mm. But when you're building your network, it's something we look at when we are building networks for people, is that you want to think about um, referrals, reciprocity and strategic partnerships when you're building your mm. network, not just the end client. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and thinking what appeals to them and things that are going to make them tr- trigger them. Think about it in a slightly different way from yeah, your well, exactly. That's excellent. Right. What we're going to do now is I'm going to stop sharing those slides. And uh, any questions on, on the chat? I can see a good number of people tuned in here with us uh, in Zoom. Uh, Siobhan, good to see you from Safri's in, in Geneva. Stefan from, from Hyvern, great to have you all on. Um, I'm going to, yeah, um, Melanie, if you want to, um, if you want to share your screen now, we'll, we'll get into the, um, right. get into the demo on the, on the profile side. Do put your comments and questions in as we, as we move along and we can, uh, Melanie can answer them for you, but uh, your screen is up there and nice and clear. <laughs> great. Um, okay. So, As you can see, I've obviously already got my pages well set up and running. Um, But I'm just going to show you for so for some people who are coming at it from scratch, I'm going to just show you how you would set up a page that is search engine optimized um, from the beginning. So and just to note that there's there's company pages and there's also showcase pages which are for anybody who hasn't used them or isn't familiar with them. These are. Um, these are pages which really are subsets of your company page. So they sort of sit within it. So just to give you an idea. So when you go to your profile and you can often, um, if you're an admin of it, you can manage other people's um, showcase pages as well. So if I, you scroll down, um, you can see um, a number of um, company pages, some of which um, I'm an admin of, um, but then you have these showcase pages um, and These um, you can use to highlight a particular service that you offer. Um, So I'll just show you. So, for Mm. example, if you run a group, um, this is the e-private client group. um, They've actually set up a showcase page for that. Mm. Um, I have one here. Mm. Um, And so, for example, um, say my LinkedIn training um, Mm. or my LinkedIn. This is a private members group, this one. And so, you know, I've set up a, a separate page for it and you can gain followers for that as well um you but it just sits as a subset under your company page do you see mainly in professional services firms using a showcase if they had a specific team or group or service does that do you ever see that or that's yeah you do so for example you might have say you had um i'll tell you so for an example like if you have say Devere. Um, so Devere, they will have separate showcase pages for their digital platforms. So, mm. to, so um, you know, you can see, or you might have um, a showcase page for a different, if you've got an office in a different location. Mm. Um, and so there's various ways that you can use it. Um, what I would say is that they generally get have less followers than your actual company page. Mm. <laughs> so, so you've got to think of it, you, you are going down the line. But what is actually really good is it's good for, um, just for sort of separating people's focus and to highlight. Mm. So not necessarily that people are going to keep going back to them, but when they come to your company page, it, it then just highlights the other services that you actually offer. So, you know, you could have one for, well, there's, you know, you can have an, an event section, but, you know, yeah, exactly. Say, um, if you had a fiduciary group, for example, and they had an aviation team, the fiduciary yeah. group often has a big com- corporate following, but they could have a showcase on, jets or so and, and exactly and the front office exactly. Exactly. Take a bit more responsibility for that i guess then isn't it so but the, the idea is you could post their niche content mm. to that showcase page which is only relevant to that to that group of people following that so mm. as you said if you've got say the fiduciary group and mm. say they, they want to showcase um yachts they want to have a, mm. a page on yachts for people who have a particular interest in yachts or you know or mm yeah whatever private jets or whatever um then they can post content that is just going to be relevant to that group of people so you know you might have or you you know you might have um say if you had a financial publishing company you might want to have um a showcase page for asset managers and a showcase page for a private client and separate you know your audiences out a little bit 
um, or you know, it, there's different ways that you can mm. use it. But yeah, but it's just a feature that that is it's useful for highlighting. Mm. Um, so what you would do is if you wanted to start from scratch, you would go to the little work icon at the top, and you go down to create a company page, and then this brings you from scratch. So we'll just pretend for a moment we're starting mm. a small business. <laughs> And here you put in the name of the company. So yeah, I've, we're gonna use generate more business just sure. as, a, as a, a sample name. And then here you can choose, this is how it will show at the top in your URL. So mine's a marketing company. So I'm gonna call it generate more business marketing as the URL, because when people are searching for a marketing company, I want it to come up. So we're talking again about this concept of search engine optimization and putting in keywords so you might want to even though it's called generate more business i might want to put marketing as part mm. of that in there um, then we would just then this is where um, we talked about here you fill in all the details and really important so your website your industry so for example we will put this in as marketing and advertising company size um, and we're a privately held company. And now this is, this is key and it's something that you can do on personal profiles and everyone should do on personal profiles. So do excuse me if you watched the, the, the webinar last month and you, I've, this has already been said, but the um, background image on, on your page um, and your logo should be named the file should be named with a keyword for what you do. So mm. what I'm talking about is that when it goes to choose file, when you save your logo on your computer, so, um, let's see if, so for example, here, I think it should be one, here we go. Mm. So here is the logo, which say I'm gonna use on the page, but I've called it LinkedIn training. So. Often when people just upload their logo, it would just be called logo because that's how they've saved it on their computer or, you know, profile pic mm. or something like that. But actually change the name of the file that you use to a keyword for what you do. So whether you're a, an executive search you know you're an executive search professional if you're um business development if you are events um if you're marketing if you're asset management use those keywords in the name of your image and then upload it and then that will push your page up higher than a competitor's who hasn't mm. done that mm. so when someone's searching for linkedin marketing my page is going to come up higher than a competitor's who hasn't named their images with link with LinkedIn marketing or training. Wow. Um, and, and that's the same on your personal profile. So with mm. your background image and your profile picture of yourself, <laughs> name it with what you do, not your name. Mm. Um, it's, it's important. And then, um, and then here, the tagline, again, this is where you have, um, this is where it gives you the opportunity to um, put in those keywords that people are searching for. So you explain, um, you explain um, obviously what you do, who you help, a bit like it's really a reflection of maybe your headline on your personal page, but it will obviously differ slightly for, your, for the company, especially if you're an employee. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're looking at the company page, um, you would generally add in the key services that you provide, um, but, Put in who you help. Um, that's really the that's really the key. Um, now I'm not actually going to save this because I don't actually want <laughs> I don't actually want it as a company page. Um, so I'm just going to go back to my company page now and just talk you through. So there's some really um, advantageous um, features of LinkedIn company pages now, and that's really the events feature. Mm. and the um, hashtag feature mm. so I'm just going to take you down here so um, as I said just to show you so there's um, a tagline um, where I've said exactly um, what we provide and who we who we work with 
mainly. Um, and you can see that I've actually put as my name of the company on my company page. I've used those keywords again in the company name, although it's not officially part of my company name, um, all to help my ranking in search engines. Um, now I'm going to take you over to here. So here is the events feature. So I'm going to show you why it is advantageous to use the events feature um, on the company pages to, um, as opposed to setting up an event on your personal profile. Now there are advantages and disadvantages of both. Firstly, if you set it up from your personal profile, the event, you will probably get far more attendees register. Um, I mean, for example, I will often have 600 people register on my personal page, but that doesn't actually mean they sign up because there's a big difference as to anybody who has used LinkedIn mm -hmm. events will know. And it's a big, it's one of the issues that they're trying to overcome and people are always trying to overcome it, but no one's really succeeded yet, is that people, even if you put the link on the events feature, um, people will just press register because they'll get the they'll get the invitation on LinkedIn and mm. they won't actually complete the registration whether it's on Eventbrite or on your website or whatever so it's always a struggle to get people to actually re finish the registration um, but the using the events feature here um, means that they'll be they'll be invited as so it'll show that Trevor Zan has invited them to the event so I'm just going to show you sorry I keep moving myself across here um, if we go to the event um, and we go down, um, you get these details um, uh, along the left hand side. So you can you post regularly and then the people that have registered will um, get notified that you've that you've posted something about the event. Um, so here you have this option that you can notify attendees. Um, I think it's once every 24 hours you're allowed to. You can't keep spamming people with updates. Um, you can start, you can create a poll to try and get some engagement with, you know, sort of, you basically want to sort of get some excitement about an event that's happening. Um, but here, and this is really, this is the best bit, is, and this is really why people use the company pages, is that you can um, download the email addresses of the people that have registered. If you view, and you don't have that option, if you've invited them using your personal profile to um, an event, you can't do that. So mm -hmm. you have to have set up the event from company pages to be able to download mm -hmm. your attendee registrations, which means that you can then, if you wanted to, you could then start like an, e you can then take them to email. Um, because they've consented that you can contact them. But also you can email reminders then, can't you? Like, you know, for like for this, for the YouTube link, I, I download the follow up. Yeah. Exactly. So instead of relying on people being on LinkedIn for the follow up, yeah. you can then send them a link to it and stay in touch by mm. email, which we all know works very well. <laughs> so um, and often um, as good as LinkedIn. So um, so that's one of the that's one of the key features um, of of using LinkedIn pages. Um, now, I'm just going to go back. Just to say that, I mean, anyone who's running a company webinar, um, it's a great tool. It's something you should really talk to your marketing team about how you're using it because it, it, you, you can get a thousand invites a week, isn't it, Manly, that the yeah. company can send out. So There's a lot of bandwidth. People see it as well organically between others. It's suggested to them. So it can grow your reach. So it's sort of thinking about if you've got something coming up, an event that you want to promote, definitely be asking the question of your marketing team. Are we doing this through, through a LinkedIn event page? Because it, it will grow your reach. To give you an example, um, we are working, and actually they're quite public about it, so it's fine. We, we, we've just done some work with Oracle software mm. and they had three times as many event registrations when we invite when we invited people um using the linkedin events feature as to how mm. as to their normal numbers that sign up for their webinars mm. so i mean the potential is huge for using these events features here mm. um, so what i would say is that you you do need to do it in bulk so you know just sort of inviting a few people doesn't work you need to mm. really max out those thousand um invitations um, and but what you can do is you can add speakers to the event and they can invite their network. 
So mm. that's and that's a good way of increasing that. And I just did a little tutorial on it the other day, actually, which um, I posted, which is how to bulk invite. Because um, I don't know whether I've got. I'll, I'll just see whether I've got mm. any invitations left, so I can just quickly um, show people how to do that. Because otherwise, you sort of get repetitive strain injury doing that a thousand times. Yeah. Um, so what you can do is. Um, if I invite connections, right, normally, um, if I just want to, you can see I've already invited lots of people, but if you normally, instead of going click, click, <laughs> click, um, lots of times, you'll see at the moment, there is no bulk invitation option. What you do is a little hack here is choose a filter from across the top. So say if I choose London as my filter, then this little pop-up comes up. Mm. And then that allows me to just scroll down like this and automatically invites mm. my thousand people in about five minutes. And you can also do by sector, can't you? So you could- Yeah, exactly, you know, David. So you lawyers, scroll so, across. Yeah. And what's really good is say, for example, say, for example, I want particular companies mm. to come to my webinar because mm. You know, I think that mm. my content will be useful to them. I can then particularly invite employees that I'm connected to from mm. that company. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I use the filters the whole time. We use them. For, in fact, for every event that we put on, we always use the filters to make sure that we're only inviting connections um, that are going to be interested because you don't want to waste your connections because mm. you only... I mean, a thousand actually isn't that many. So um, you, you definitely don't want to don't want to waste them. OK, so and when we go back to real world events, these these pages could also be used, but with a registration. So it's just a qualifying, isn't it? You get a group of people and then they have to register to attend. But I think people will be using. These. Yeah, yeah. But that's how they, I mean, that's how they started it. So we've all forgotten because it's yeah. been a year. We've all forgotten what, you know, how we actually used it for in-person events. But, to, but that's exactly to start with. Um, you know, you can put a link to an actual, an actual real live event and, yeah. uh, and people can register through, through this. Um, but I'm going to go down. Um, so I'm just going to go back. Um, right. So I'm just going to talk now about the hashtags because this is what mm. I was talking about earlier. And this is what I would say is the most useful way to use LinkedIn company pages. So here you get a choice of um, you get a choice of three hashtags that you can associate with your company page. It's a maximum of three that you choose when you set up your company page as one of the options is to add hashtags. So when you look at my page, you might sort of wonder why have I used the hashtags? I haven't, why haven't I used the hashtags LinkedIn and marketing? And that's because I've used, and I change these, by the way, I change these regularly over time, depending on who I want to engage with at that moment. Um, so for example, if we are doing an event and we are targeting that webinar for, um, for financial advisors, or if we're targeting, if, if I'm doing a training just for lawyers, or a training just for heads of marketing and development, I will change the hashtags here um, because for, for that particular period, um, because what it means is that, for example, if I now click on, um, if I click on wealth management, it brings me to a feed of all the people who are um, talking on LinkedIn about wealth management. Mm. So then I can go down and I look at the companies and um, I look at the people who are posting about it. And then this is where I then comment and I can comment as my company. Mm. And so you can get all your employees to be commenting as your company and it's the best way to get your brand out there mm. um, is by using this feature by engaging as your company and it's the only real way on linkedin of engaging as a company and not as an individual so um 
I would make it standard every day to go through, find the posts where your ideal clients are sitting and engage on their content as your company. And then do the same as yourself, obviously, because you want to have your personal engagement every day. Personal engagement, company engagement. and But this is something that you can get your team to do. So mm. if you have people working with you, whether it's an assistant or a team, mm. they should all be, if they're admins of the page, they sh- can engage as your company. And that's Perfect, really, great tip. That's, that's, really, that's really key. And then we'll just go back. Um, we're coming into the last 10 minutes yeah. so get your questions in if you do if you do have one yeah uh, i'm always happy to answer questions yeah. but um otherwise um Melanie, it'd be great to, just for you to carry on okay <laughs> so yeah the um is so, yeah at the top um i mentioned earlier there's this content tab um so when your page is fully set up you will see this content tab. So if you haven't got it, it's probably because you haven't completed your page set up properly or completely. Um, When you have LinkedIn, then reward you with a content tab. Um, And what you can do is um, you can narrow down. So for example, here, if I look at all LinkedIn members, which gives me more than 500 million, and then I look at all those ones um, in financial services and marketing, And I'm going to say, I'm looking for content that is going to be of interest to say people in the United Kingdom, people in Switzerland, um, and people in New York. And then what it does now, I can even narrow down further and say that I'm going to look at Oh, sorry, I don't want entry level people. <laughs> so CEOs and directors. And now it's given me um, a whole host of content suggestions for me to share. So it basically makes content creation really, really simple. Um, so if I press on that first mm-hmm. article, um, it just takes got, me to the article directly. Just come in, Melanie. Um, from Camille Yardley Scott, ILS in the Isle of Man. Thank you, Camille, for your question. Um, just at re- asking for a recap on why you shouldn't share posts or, I mean, sort of linked to this, if, if there's a good post out of the company page, what right. should people be? I'll show you how to do it. Okay. Brilliant. I'll show you what you should and shouldn't do. Brilliant. Okay. So, right. So we've got a post here. Sorry, I don't know why it's gone very slow all of a sudden. Okay. So we have a post here. Now I need to actually view the page as a member. So I'm now viewing the page as um, I'm viewing the page as one of my team. If I go down, um, sorry, I look at the posts. Now I have this option here, which is standard. It's what most Mm. team members and employees do. They press share. Mm. And then as themselves, the little post is auto-populated and they write some content and they press share. And it probably won't get a great reach. Mm. But so just sorry, I have to keep moving myself around. Um, Just got that. But what they can do is they can go up here and they can press copy link. Then they go to their homepage and they start a new post. And then they paste the link in like that. And it should auto, there we go, and it'll, it'll look the same. You then delete the link, always delete the link. So LinkedIn, don't think you're sending them anywhere else. That You do that on a general post, but it looks tidier when you're doing it here. Mm-hmm. And LinkedIn now see this as fresh content and a fresh post wow. rather than a shared post. So that's how to share a post, um, which to get the most reach. Great. Camille, I hope that that's clear. Look, look, it was useful to just run through that, but uh, do carry on, uh, Melanie. Yeah, so I, th- I think I'll just go back. How to post content is, is sort of one of the key themes that, um, that people always message me about is how to get more reach for their content. And actually, we, I spend a whole day of um, the training course I run, we spend looking at content and how to 
how to post well and how to create content that gets lots of views. Um, so up here, um, oh, right, okay. So we've looked at the content tab. Um, we have the analytics here, so followers. And this gives you over the last, you can actually custom um, build the period, but this shows you um, basically the new analytics, um, you know, for your page um, shows who, it shows all your followers. And um, this is, as you can see, they, they highlight new features for you. Um, so it's only been in, re well, relatively recent times. They call it new, it's not that new now, <laughs> but um, in the last year um, that you, before you couldn't, um, you couldn't tell who your, um, company page followers were. This is actually, A, it's brilliantly useful for seeing who is actually looking um, at your page. And then it gives you the option whether you want to connect with them personally and start, you know, start a conversation and trying to build a relationship with these people. Um, but it also has stopped a lot of spammy behavior that has gone on the, on the platform where people have bought followers. Mm. And I mean, obviously we're trying to avoid that sort of behavior because it ruins the platform mm -hmm. um so um it, it's quite but it's it but it's actually just useful for when you're building your business and engage and seeing who is looking and where your potential clients lie um is by looking at these analytics um on a regular i mean i don't look at them every day my team doesn't look at them every day um but if you look at them what i definitely um i mean i personally will look at my company's analytics once a week um, and just see who who our new followers are, and um, you know, and, and what's happening, and what, and what you know, what people are engaging in, and what posts are doing well. And here, um, they also give you some uh, some other companies, so you can track how they're doing and and and, uh, and what they're up to, and also give you some sort of. Uh, often you can click on their page and get some ideas for content. Uh, I don't mean plagiarize, but I can just see what other people are are posting about. Um, so analytics are really useful and um, products is it's a new feature and this really is a new feature in literally the last couple of months. Um, and this is really for software companies where um, they can add products, um, which is they've just rolled it out, really. Um, so I actually I mean, I haven't got any clients using this, um, but it is it's a new feature so you mm. can. Um, yeah, which I think what, the, what they've done is they've rolled it out for software companies, but gradually it's going to be rolled out to more and more industry so that you can add features and basically build a virtual shop basically on online. So this is why people are saying that the LinkedIn company pages are eventually mm. going to overtake websites. So maybe if you're thinking of having your spending a lot of money on having your website <laughs> revamped, maybe just think it carefully before you do, because LinkedIn company pages are gaining so much more traction and functionality as the months go on. Can we just before we close, could we just cover the in invitation to company pages? Because this is something that people might not be fully aware of. So under your admin tools here on the right. Um, you have a whole host of options from create an event, create a showcase page, which is what we were talking about, to invite connections. And here again, very much um, like the um, events, you can um, filter down as to who of your connections you invite to follow the page. Um, now here you can see um, I've got 100 um, credits left. Um, I haven't done my page invites this month. Um, some people will see 250 on their pages and some people will even see 300. At the moment, LinkedIn are rolling out different amounts to different people. Mm -hmm. So um, most people still have the 100 credits. However, I think it's mostly in the States that people have been given um, 250 and 300. But by the same rationale, those people have also in recent weeks experienced the fact that they had those and now they've gone back to 100. So we think that LinkedIn is playing around a bit with, with their credits because mm -hmm. so you might have 100, you might have 250, you might have 300. Um, and you get it, as you can see, you get it refilled at the end of the, of the month. And if someone accepts your invitation, you then get an opportunity to send more. So it's thinking carefully, isn't it, about who, you, you know, if you know someone is not on, is connected to you, but not active on LinkedIn, the chance of them accepting, yeah. or it's not going to be, in, there's no exactly. point in yeah. going for people who aren't going to have a high degree of likelihood to accept. 
that's exactly right. You always really want to think about your connections as to who is active, which is something that if you have the LinkedIn sales navigator, which is for, for those of you who don't have it, it's like the upgraded version of LinkedIn, the business platform. If you're doing um, sort of business, if you're really using it for business generation and lead generation, and that has an area on it where you can filter down both, um, both potential invitees and your connections to see who has posted on LinkedIn in the last 30 days. And that gives you um, mm. that gives you the option of seeing who is active or at, like daily on LinkedIn. Another great tip. Well, Manly, we're out of time. Um, it will be um, just before we close, those who want more information, um, what, what should they do? They can obviously follow your page. Uh, you've got an accelerator coming up. Why don't you tell us, uh, tell the audience what you um, what they can do if they want more? Yeah, sure. So um, do connect, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, if you are interested in, in learning more, um, learning more about how to um, optimize your profile, how to post, um, how to use LinkedIn Sales Navigator, and really how to if build and implement um, a real LinkedIn, effective LinkedIn strategy. Um, I'm running a small group training course, um, 22nd to the 25th of March called the LinkedIn Accelerator. It's at lunchtime, so it doesn't cut into your working day. Um, and it's a small group training um, for up to 20 people. So, and the reason I keep it small is because there's usually quite a lot of chat and questions and it's, um, it works much better on a smaller basis so it's not a big webinar of um, 50 people but yeah do follow obviously follow by the, follow the Trevor Zan company page um, and please do, do drop me a line with any if you've got any ad hoc questions I'm always happy to just answer them so perfect there is just one a final question just popped in the chat which is worth just taking on for a sec Laura Daly from Equium um, that when you were showing us that invite that was obviously for the company page rather than your personal so Laura's just asking the question that was that for you that was to invite to the company exactly yeah tucked away a little bit isn't it so it was to raise awareness of that that's why I wanted you to show people isn't it because they're not always they don't always realize yeah. that. no that's exactly right so um yeah it invites to the com to the company page and you can only invite your people you're connected with already brilliant well Melanie thank you for that hour on, on LinkedIn company page it's hugely no, useful no. loads of great tips uh, follow Melanie and uh, and get involved with uh, with Trevor Zan and, and, and see if they can help you uh, grow your business. So thank you for joining us for the Power Hour and we hope to uh, see you next time. Uh, more details to follow shortly. Thanks for inviting me. Pleasure.